can start. Hello everyone, my name is Dalim Voina. I'm from Modweb Romania and uh, I'm here to show you the easiest a web ever uh, made for you to run Plon on your machine and in production. So first, let me start with this question. What is Docker? Do you know what Docker is? Raise your hand, hands please. Okay, everyone, okay, I'm done here. <laughs> Okay, so let me say it this way. Docker is for your system what VirtualEnv is for Python. I mean, I know it's more than that, but uh, look it for now, just look it at it uh, just like a VirtualEnv for, virtual for, for your uh, system. So imagine that you have an isolated environment at the system level, so you can install everything you want in this is isolated environment without messing out the the other things on the on the machine. So it you have this isolated environment on all platforms, Linux, Mac, or Windows, and you can, you have it also this is the same in devil and production. And more than that, you can use your favorite Linux distribution to build it. So you can, you can uh, use Alpine, Debian, CentOS, or if you are more paranoid, you can build it from scratch. So let's see how, how the debugging, the six stages of debugging before Docker were. So <laughs> it works on my machine. <laughs> But from now on, it will work on every machine. So, let's see how do you install Plon without Docker. And I took this from the Plon documentation. The, the Plon documentation. You have to have installed Python 2.7 with build support for expat, zlib, and then you have to install all these libraries that on CentOS are different names than Debian, and then you have to to, to create your build out CFG and then you have to run it and oh, this is also from the plan documentation this will take way too longer and it may give you some, some syntax errors but now with plan with docker all you have to do is to do docker run plan and yes it's official. So plon, now the plot is, is in the... <laughs> yeah, and to Sven. Uh, so after a long process of uh, acceptance, they finally accepted the plot image in the Docker uh, official repository. So now you can run it directly like this. So. Now, how do you test add-ons with this image? You can just uh, add them as an environment variable with spaces in between. You can also put the version here, like because the faster navigation now is not uh, uh, released. It will, this command will take uh, previous version, but if you put 10.0 release candidate one, You'll get that one. Uh, how do you develop plot addons? You make a sources uh, directory on your machine. You git clone code in there and then give Docker permission in that folder. And then uh, with the environment var develop, you say Docker and plon to develop this add-on. And you mount this uh, CRC folder inside the Docker container. How do you debug? For that, you have to enter in the Docker container and start from from there. The storage. Where is my DataFS? Well, by default, uh, this image is using uh, Docker volumes. So when you run Docker, it will create a 
critical name for, for your volume. And the default location of Docker volumes uh, is in varlib Docker volumes. You should use Docker volumes labels because if you don't, when you remove your container, you will also remove the volume. So you may lo lose data in this process. That's why use label volumes. And then you will have to explicit explicitly remove them if you want to remove the, the plum container. Now, Zeo also put Zeo in this image. And it was a suggestion from uh, Docker guys because there is no official Zeo image. So the guy said, but you have Zeo in the, in the plon. Why don't you just do it like that? And we did it like that. So you can run Zeo and then you start your uh, plon clients. How do you extend this image? Because you should extend, you, you shouldn't abuse the add-ons uh, environment variable because when you do that, uh, when your container first run is created, it will rerun the build out. So you should, you should test like in this way, but in production, you should create your own uh, Docker images. So you have your build out. GFG, and you put your eggs here, and then you create your Docker file and save from plon version, user root, and also install system dependencies, and then copy extended build out in the Docker, in Docker image, and then run build out. And then you build it like this. More uh, more documentation is the on Docker docs. Now, the orchestration. For the orchestration uh, on your machine or, a, or, or on a single host, you have uh, from Docker guys this Docker Compose tool, which we install it like pip install Docker Compose. And then you, you have the YAML syntax syntax and put it like that and you can also i mean you don't have to define the, the zero clients 10 times you just you, you, you just use docker compose scale plon 3 and here i also added the load balancer for this plon and here is a demo is our docker compose file. I do the docker compose up minus t and then st starting starting the, the services. And you can see the logs, combined logs or on all of the services. And then Plone is taking a while, but now it's up starting. And you can see our plone site. Now, if I go to the load balancer admin page, I can see that I have one backend here. And now, if I do the Docker Compose scale, will have more uh, backends. The backends will appear. I mean, this image I used for load balancer is uh, automatically discovering backends based on uh, environment vars. And now you can see that we have the backends, the Haproxy backends 
uh, up and running. And here I create a plant site, but you know how to do that already, <coughs> so we can skip that. And how do you do orchestration on multiple hosts? And here we have the Docker solution, Docker Swarm. And there is also Kubernetes by Google and also the cloud providers uh, started to add their own integration for containers. Also Azure has, uh, has an integration. But now, today I, I'm going to tell you about Rancher because this is what we are using for in the past year. And I'm, I have more experience with, uh, with this. So what is Rancher? Rancher is a complete platform for run running containers. And how do you install it and run? We just look around Rancher server. And here is another demo. So here is my Docker Compose for Rancher server. Already started, you can see it in the background. And uh, <laughs> let's see, I, I don't have any host register, so I can, uh, I can register them by, by directly by Rancher. So you can, you, can, uh, you can use the custom method to register by running a command on, on, on backends. Or as you can see, Rancher has already integrated some clouds uh, in, in its interface. So here I'm using packet and I have some some tokens so I have to wipe your memory after that. <laughs> now this is just a demo demo setup. So here I added some labels for these machines um, to know that these machines are for plon as plon backends. I'll also add some machines on DigitalOcean in the same way. So I will name that by, by DigitalOcean and I can scale how many machines uh, I can create. And here again the API key. I can also select what type of, or the size of the machines, the region, and also the labels. Okay, so you can see now here that the, the machines are creating and also on packet. They are popping in. And now they are activating and now they are ready to to deploy Plon on them. So here I will add a container, just a single container of Plon to see the, the interface, what, uh, what they offer. So you see the image, you will map some ports. And also you can see here, you can customize commands, environment variables, 
and also I said where to to run to run this uh, Docker container. And because it's the first time, it will take a while because it's now it's pulling the, the image from Docker Hub and extracting it and and all the the downloading part. And this is also not a very performant machine. We can see that now is up and running. It's green. If I go to that machine, I have a plum running in the cloud. I don't know what I'm doing here. No, I don't want to create a site. OK, I cut that part. So, but I also I will remove this for now. And remove it and then I can just purge it and from the catalog last week I, I added a pull request to the rancher uh, catalog community catalog and you can see that here you can define a custom we have a custom uh, deployment for plone so here you can have add-ons here just to test them you can scale how many plon sites you want how many plon zero clients you want and here you can see the the output because you can also grab this output on your on your machine and run it uh, with the rancher compose from the from the terminal so here here is my stack with zero server so zero server is now starting so you can see that no no plone plone is waiting for for this to start up and it's starting because it's also extracting and the packet machine are still creating but this this cloud provider is very interesting because they say that they offer bare metal machines i don't know how but they are very fast i, I tested and compared with digital ocean they it seems very fast and you can see that the plone backend spread across my my machines and now They are starting, initializing, and one of it died from some reasons. But I let it here in this video to show you next what happens. So you will see that this got restarted by the Ranchel health check. So there is a health check that sees that your container are still running or responding on port or on TCP port 8080, or you can add also health check for uh, HTTP requests. So I mean, it shouldn't only reply on on port 8080, but also to to not have a 500 e error. HTTP 500 error. And now I have clone running and also the load balancing is up and running. And if I go there, I can create my, my plone site. Let's see. 
Ooh. So, this is our plan. You can see that this in uh, for the EA website, this is in uh, draft version two, but we plan to to do continuous deployment with um, with GitHub, Docker, Jenkins, and there is there are some tools from Rancher, Cowbell, and I mean you just git on you will git push on GitHub and it will go to production after it goes to this checks and tests and final steps. Documentation, so you can start from Docker Hub, plon official image, then we will have it in docs.plan.org. Sven promised prom promise me that this print we will have there and we will also add the link in uh, on plon.org to download to in the installing section. Documentation also is on docker.com, rancher.com and if you need examples and uh, big deployments, I don't know, Rancher Compose examples, Docker Compose examples, or deployment examples, you can just go to GitHub, our repository and query for Docker, and you will get plenty of repositories and documentation and examples and how to use. Now, I'd like to thank to Sven for for helping us making this possible to Antonio de Marinis for pushing things and not stopping pushing things forward to Odweb for letting me do this and of course to my wife for not letting me look like a geek today <laughs> okay thank you Questions? Whoa. I didn't expect that. <laughs> uh, do we have a microphone? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, well, personally, this is the first time I uh, hear about the ranch. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more, more about, about it? About the rancher? Uh, yeah, the rancher software. Yeah, the rancher software is open source. You can run it on your uh, machine there is there is a big community around it they have a forum with a lot of questions and res replies and they are very responsive on things so yeah let's see uh, you saw the the interface but you can also you can also run it from um, so from the terminal up okay up minus d okay so it says that the here you can see that the, the zero server is not in sync with the deployment so you can do the upgrade from here upgrading zero server because I added so I, I took the where is it let's see where are you too many screens okay Okay, so it says here, yeah, we, we missed the upgrading part, but the upgrade is um, is stopping your your previously contain your previous container and will create another one, and this is because now you see here that there is a finish upgrade. 
if you don't do that, you can do the rollback. I mean, if something is not working, you can easily roll back, or if you finish the upgrade, it will delete the, the old container. Uh, what else I can tell you about it? Let's see how our uh, Rancher looks like. This is a development environment. You can see a lot of testing here. And the production. Also, you, you have this environment so you can, uh, you can isolate applications and stacks by teams, by, I don't know, by, because this one. Also, from the Rancher catalog, if you put this in the Rancher catalog, you will get this upgrade button when something is new. And you can do it directly from here. But as we are, uh, as we like the terminal, I, I prefer the terminal. And uh, what else? You you have users. You have. Uh, so if I go to manage environments. Here you have the, the users and the roles. So the member can deploy stuff, the read only can see only, and the owner can have, because you can, you can see here that I don't have the, the full rights, but here I have also the admin and you can see all the actions that, uh, that are happening uh, in here. You can also deploy it on multiple nodes because when you have multiple environments, it gets slower. But you can you can uh, you can work on performance because you c you can deploy it in multiple nodes with MySQL outside from the Rancher server and all that stuff. Yes. How quickly can you go from bare metal? How quickly can you go from bare metal to a to new the cloud? Rancher? You can you can also register bare metal machines here. I mean, uh, you don't when I say bare metal, it could be a, a Docker uh, instance. It doesn't have to be a, a dedicated server, but just from nothing to, to something? It depends. I mean, the, the, the most of the work is in preparing the images and doing it right, because you shouldn't, you shouldn't mount things from the, from the host. You shouldn't mount configuration files from the host. You should use most of uh, environment variables to customize your your deployment and I don't know it can from one hour to one month <laughs> it depends okay, thanks. yes please. Um, so I have two questions uh, first the base uh, docker image for clone when you do docker run uh, that's that run build out at that moment, or only when you provide the environment variable with the with the products? It will run the the build out only when you provide the the add-ons. Okay. The add-ons or the devil or the this this one. For the Zeo server, there is a script inside, so I'm not running rerunning build out here. I just do a replace in the zeoconf and the plonconf to, to plon, plon configuration file to, to use the zeo server. Right, and my second question will be, um, when I started playing with, with Docker and Plon, I first thought on doing the like a base Plon image with the, with the base packages and then uh, extend it uh, to have uh, additional X, right? And, uh, but what I found is that 
my my base blown image has uh, some size, and when I use it to run build out again to extend it and have two or three packages in addition to those, I get the size of the X uh, folder like duplicated because it's running again build up and it's touching the whole directory again. So how did you manage to solve this or you don't, uh, don't no, care that's, about the that's size increase? No, no, no. Uh, we care about because you can see here that we do a lot of cleanup at the end and you have to to tell doc uh, to tell plon where to to store uh, these eggs because i i think your build out is using another pot for the eggs or you you have them still in the build out cache ex directory because if you look no, but here, what I found is that since Docker uses like a layered uh, file system, uh, even if you remove it uh, from the, do do the Docker file, even if on the recipe you say remove this, uh, it will still um, have the space there anyway. Can Sven? Well, um, what? When we designed the Docker image for for Plum, like for officially, we were thinking really long how to do it. And basically, we decided to have some kind of, uh, of compromise. So we tried to take the best known things from uh, from Docker, like you should do, it, and from from Plum. For example, that you now can uh, uh, say a written environment variable at x, and then with that is running, that is a trade-off that is easy to use. What uh, and the, the, well, the, the trade off is it's, it's, it's still small the image, but it's slightly bigger than a hardcore customized image. And what I, for example, do on my own setups uh, to uh, avoid your problem, is we, I have a uh, Docker build uh, image only for building, and then I just grab the compiled clone out of this image and push it into another image. So I have an old build machine fabric only for building and removing layers with a void of too many layers. But I mean, this is, um, if we're talking, it's, it's cool to do it, it's working well, but then we're really going in cool, uh, excitement Docker stuff. And we, uh, we uh, thought for the official image, what we're using now, we compromise, so it's easy to use, and it's running stable, and it's fine, and it's also not that crazy big. But yeah, trade-off to make it kind of easy, easy, uh, easy to start for users is we have a uh, still compiler inside the image that if you have an egg, if you add an egg via the environment, it will run build out. If you if you think you don't want that and my image is getting too big, then uh, you should start uh, picking your own image. This is, but these are fine, they are running in production on several sites. And, uh, and we really have to thank uh, Alan because he did uh, most of the work Anyone else? Um, I think I'm wondering how in this approach and in the multiple sites approach, how do you handle, I don't know, I think maybe the Kina this morning would be a good example. How do you handle it when there's important data in, in the data FS file or blob storage? Like how does, how does that work? Like, security issue or I mean uh, the question is is this secure or where where does Zeo server ends up or yeah I mean how do you I don't know, how do you how do you handle it if if there's kind of application like this morning she talked about building these entire sites through the web so that's not going to the file system at all so how would you handle you know, a product like that where the users are constantly adding to it and building on it, and, and there's critical data that you need to, um, you know, maybe deploy a test version of or something like that. So you're asking me, how do you put the data FS here? Or, or just how would you handle it? Um, how would you handle it in the context of Docker? Or uh, for this, we have, I mean, there is nothing from Plon, but at the EA, 
we created a rsync docker image and you you can uh, uh, mount it you can run the, the server on 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 the source host and the client on the target host and they they get um, let me show you that I mean you can always go to the machine and, and put put things from uh, from the machine it's SSH on, on that machine and and air sync but if you don't have access on that machine then we have this air sync docker image and what does it creates two so you create the client and you create the we, we also you can see that we have also cron cron task you can to the client put, put crons on it so to sync i don't know nightly or and we are using this on staging and development so this one is syncing from production every night to staging and from staging to development environment and it get uh, it should be somewhere yeah so you run the client and then the client will generate a ssh key and then you run the ser server with the ssh key as an environment variable the ssh key the public part of it Exactly. So, how you handle data? So, imagine your container with a database is dying. How you sync this data to another container? How, how your site still alive? Five we are not using. Die. The thing is that we at EA switched to Postgres and rare storage, and we have now one Postgres master and one replica. So, it replicates in real time. And if some, something happens, we can easily switch to the replica. And this process, so you're using Postgres instead of the other piece. But this Postgres, what do you use as a backend? Where you have data from, you have papers from the Postgres, where they store? You can always use Postgres as without containers, but we, we, we want to also do that. And I mean, the data is not in the container, is in a Docker volume. That, that's why I said don't use, use labeled containers, use, use labeled volumes, and because the volumes are persistent and, and you can enforce, I mean, here, you can enforce, with these labels you can enforce, you can say, Postgres go only to this machine on and only to this machine. So you, if you have a high availability for Postgres, you create three machines, one master and uh, two replicas. And also for the front end, you should have one for Apache Varnish Memcache and another one. In, and, and then the high availability, there is also the DNS high availability. We didn't try it, we know it exists, but we'll, uh, we'll do more in the next months. <laughs> but for... Yeah, Please. question, do you, when you run the Plone in, in Docker, what user do you run Plone as? A lot of Docker Hub um, clients run everything as root, which is insecure. No. Does it run as root or what? Does it run as a clone user or what? There is, that's why, that's why here I said because you will fight a lot of, of with, with this, uh, well, this user. Let me see where is it. See? So there is a dedicated user. In the container itself, that's, that'll run by default unless you give a, a user, Docker, a user to use in that container. That container will run as root. 
No, we 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 switch, we we fall back on plan. So, if you look at the Docker file, you'll see at the end we. You can see that the user is plan. And have you one more question? Have you ever looked at OpenShift instead of Rancher? Uh, no, okay. but maybe Sven <laughs> has some experience. Open shift, how does it work? Pretty well. So, you should come to the showdown uh, later today on. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Just a quick question. It's possible to run Open self hosted, or you're talking about Open Shift on, on Red Hat? We can do both. You can be both. Okay. Okay then. Thank you.